We've got a great video for you today on how to have fun outdoors. You're gonna love this one. That's right, three homes inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright. Two of them, Frank Lloyd Wright himself, one of them done by his apprentice after Frank Lloyd passed away. So you're gonna love this video. We've got some great shots, great tour guides, and we're gonna show you around on our own private tour. We're also gonna do a lunch and tour so you can see what that's all about. But we highly recommend this place. Great people, great service, great. I mean, these guys gave us all the history and the architecture. You're gonna see it. So definitely subscribe, hit that like button so we can get this out to everyone. And come on out to Western Pennsylvania and check this out. Oh, hi. <laughs> we got a great video for you today on how to have fun outdoors. That's right, it's Polymath Park in Pennsylvania. If you love Frank Lloyd Wright, you are going to love this video. We got a great experience for you today, no question about it. If you haven't, definitely subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, check out our Facebook, Instagram, get notified, and check out our website, How to Have Fun Outdoors. We got an incredible experience. We start off with part of a tour where you get to eat at the Treetops restaurant, which is absolutely fantastic. Then we tour all three of the homes. If you're not familiar with our channel, we also have How to Have Fun Fishing, How to Have fun camping and how to have fun outdoors and how to have fun cruising you're gonna want to check out all our channels no question about it we've got all kinds of great stuff for you to check out so let's go ahead and get started we're gonna start with the lunch we highly recommend it with your spouse or significant other up front as part of the package but if you're not interested in that just fast forward right into the architecture and take it from there again thank you so much for watching definitely hit the like button and let's go ahead and get started well, we love Frank Lloyd Wright, and I love the architecture. We heard about this place, and we were all about it. Outside of Pittsburgh, take a look at the different homes on this particular site, and they have done a great job with this park. The owners have decided to try to pull all of these homes into one location. We were heading, that's right, east towards Pittsburgh, and uh, we heard about this and decided to drive on over. And Alice was all excited when she heard they had these lunch tours and dinner tours. So we did the lunch tour. Like we said, you can fast forward it from here, but we're going to give you a quick overview of that. And then we're going to dive right into the different uh, houses and you're going to absolutely love it. But we highly recommend this. It was really nice to kind of get there, learn about everything that this site has to offer. And it was really cool to see that they have, in the spirit of Frank Lloyd Wright, tried to incorporate some of that with the furniture, the furnishings, and also the gift shop and everything else that they have there. It's really, really nice. And the food was spectacular. We really enjoyed it. No question about it, they did a great job and you'll get to see that. So as we walked up to the restaurant, which is on the site, you can see here that it's absolutely beautiful. And as we come in, no question about it, it is a nice little setup. So take a look at here, you can see those really cool drawings uh, from Frank Lloyd Wright, but how about the furniture? Exactly like Frank Lloyd Wright has uh, established in several of the houses. These guys uh, did a good job trying to replicate that. But as you can see here, here is the lunch menu, and it was great. Yeah, and these are a selection of great green tea. This is a green mango and peach, and the one that Tom chooses is a nice green tea cucumber and mint. Very nice. All right, here we go. We've got the appetizer, some grilled shrimp with some chutney. Pretty awesome. Take a look at that. So as you can see here, the food looked great and it tasted great, and we were actually pretty surprised. The quality of the food was excellent. And uh, we were really excited uh, to, to get out there and check out the homes. But this was really, really nice. We highly recommend it uh, before you get started with the tour. And again, they do lunch and dinner tours. So pretty cool overall. Wow, wow. That, that lunch was fantastic. Great. Did you do all that? I wish I could do all that. I've got a wonderful <laughs> chef in the kitchen. And how are the dinners? Are they pretty good too? They're delicious, yes. You'll have to come back sometime and just make reservations for dinner for a special occasion or just for a nice drive. Wow. So there you go, Alice. We have to come back for the dinner tour. Absolutely. Now that we discovered this place, we are going to come back. <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> also, during the meal, it was nice. They gave you all kinds of literature to read up on the different homes and study them before you got to do the tour, which was kind of a nice touch, to be honest. So for some of the people, they may say, what does go, what goes on with Gypsy and Rocky <laughs> while we're doing these tours and it's still a little chilly out? Well, we can show you right there they are. And you can see that they're heated up really nicely in the Coachman Beyond 22C camper van. And we've got them on film. Yes, and they are having a great time eating their bones and drinking water and playing with their toys. <laughs> and they are nice Pretty and awesome. Okay, so lunch was great and we were ready to get started with the tour. One of the things they highlighted is they built all these little treehouse bungalows and they actually rent those out, which is super cool. They also rent out the homes. You can actually stay there, which is quite unique. If you wanted to stay in a Frank Lloyd house, you actually could. Let's go take a look at the houses. Come on, coming. Because they had dogfish growing right there on the port. Lana, so you've got some cool places to show us yes, here. Yes, so what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to begin and just give you an intro to the park, and then Ricky, she's going to take over and tell you about this house as well as the next one. Because okay. we're going to see three houses in total. So I'll give you the intro for the park first Polymath Park. So the, this acreage here, it's about 130, and it was originally established in the 1950s by two business families from Pittsburgh who really just wanted to get some vacation homes yeah. up here. So they hired a student of Frank Lloyd Wright. So I don't know how familiar you are with Frank Lloyd Wright. He had a school of architecture called Taliesin where he taught his style, organic architecture, which is a great example right here at the Balter House. So the student, Peter Bernson, he designed two houses for the families and one of which we'll be seeing on tour. They used them throughout the summers for quite a number of decades. And eventually they sold off the land. And in the early 2000s, it was purchased by the current owners, Tom and Heather Pipinchak. So where you had lunch today, Treetops Restaurant, that is that was originally their house. Wow. They had been living there, and when the property behind them became available, they jumped at the opportunity to own it. And um, it was mainly because of these houses here. See, Tom, he also studied at Taliesin. He's the founder of Polymath Park. He's a master builder, he designs, so he does it all. And they were pretty excited to have the houses, but didn't have a big plan for what they were going to do with them. But that all changed once we see, once we go to the next house, the Duncan house, when that came here, uh, they, they decided to take this visionary approach of architectural preservation. So that's what we're about here. We're dedicated to preserving structures. On this tour, this house that you're seeing, this was constructed on site, but the next two that we'll be seeing, they were designed by Frank Lloyd Wright and moved here from other locations to avoid demolition. So we save the structures, let people come and see them and just keep that idea going. So we're a development here. Uh, there's always stuff going on. You'll see storage containers. That's how we move the houses here. And we also do have another house that will be going up, hopefully groundbreaking this autumn. And it's called Birdwing. It was designed by Lloyd Wright, who is one of Wright's children. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So it's a pretty exciting place. Wow. To be. And how many uh, out of his children? How many actually did architecture? A, a few, because some became architects. Some were landscape architects. Some were a little of both. Some had nothing to do with it. So he had seven children in total. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Well, that's a great introduction. Yes. Aliche, are you excited? It. Yes, I think All it's right. a very great story. I like the architecture uh, preservation. <laughs> yeah, so we did Falling yeah. Water, and we've also done now Kentuck Knob, and we were so impressed, now we're addicted. So yes. that's what happens. That's what happens is you come out to these things and you see them in real life and the next thing you know, you want to see the next one yes. and then the next one, right? So, so this is going to be interesting for you because um, it, it's, it's kind of dabbling in a number of different styles, even though it's all one style. It's organic architecture, but they're all different versions of what's called a Usonian house. 
So Usonian is acronym for the United States of North America. And in the 30s, Wright didn't come up with the, that term, but he coined it because he said there was no American architecture. So his goal, along with his students, it was they were to be the American architects, to come up with American architecture. So Wright's vision for that was the Usonian house. So Peter Bernson is doing a vacation Usonian house right here. So it was just, they're picturing average citizens living in, in, these, in these styles. All right, Ricky, this is beautiful for sure. <laughs> How do you like those views? It's incredible. So what's the history on this one? All right, so this, this is the Balter House. This is one of the original homes on the 130 acres. Um, not designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, but by his apprentice, um, Peter Bernson. Now he was no, by no means a copycat. Okay. He, he was one of the good ones that learned from Wright, was able to incorporate his ideas in his own way. You know, but one of the things um, that he, one of the things in this room that he did uh, learn from the master was the cantilever porch, or oh yeah, over yeah. here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're not going to go up there right now because um, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's the and main three, reason. Yes. <laughs> okay. And, and the built he did a little built in here there's built ins out there you know Frank Lloyd Wright liked to do the built built ins yeah um but the Walters you know you know that well, Burns Burnson was different than Frank Lloyd Wright as well, you know in that way but he liked the um you know did more of what the the guest or not the guest the customer wanted. The customer wanted, yes. right. Oh, so he was more open yes. to their design yeah. features. Yeah, because we, we learned that uh, through the different uh, homes that there was a lot of back and forth, and and uh, Mr. Frank Lloyd Wright was a little stubborn when it came to his designs. <laughs> yes, and, and, and I believe the Bloom House, he, uh, Bernson was a little more stubborn, and but he had more leeway here in this home. Okay. And this is actually a summer home, both the, the Bloom House and this house. Okay. And we're not going to see the Bloom House today. Sorry about that. Okay. But um, the, uh, I want to say, oh, they were both intended to be uh, just summer homes. And so Bernson was commissioned to design these homes. And like I said, and what they wanted to do, Bernson wanted to do, is create a whole community of these homes up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was to be 24 of them. And um, they would be on a 300 uh, foot circle, you know, and the house would be in the center. Right. And just as the house would be in the center of the circle, the uh, fireplace is in the center of the house. Right, oh, right. Yes. And now Frank Lloyd Wright and his apprentices all believed in, you know, using the local resources. So this is all stone. All of a sudden, you've seen the outside and the inside, which again unifies the house um, in the organic style. This is uh, all quarried from this property. Wow. Very, very nice. Right now, it's a nice bed. Right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. We would go out that way, however. But they see on it. So, Aliche, this was 1963? Was? No. Okay. Oh, this was the 65. 65. Okay, 1965. So, this is after. He passed away mm -hmm. then, and the apprentice uh, did this home. Very cool. I was very excited to see this house and see what one of his apprentices did with their design, uh, with everything they had learned from Frank Lloyd Wright. And it was great. I, I really enjoyed this house and thought it was uh, pretty unique, slightly different than Frank Lloyd Wright, but it had some of its own characteristics. But clearly the organic architecture was there, which Frank is very much, you know, famous for. And as you can see, as we walk around the outside, uh, loved the way that this looked, the way that it sat in the woods. Uh, just love his architecture and uh, thought he did a great job. So let's go take a look at the next house. But before we do, 
Definitely check out our channel, Safari videos, all kinds of adventure travel videos, Barbados tip videos. You got to subscribe. We also have how to have fun camping with campground reviews, RV reviews, all kinds of cool stuff. And how about how to have fun fishing and how to have fun cruising, all kinds of cruise reviews. You will absolutely love that one. Okay. We're at the Duncan house. This is a Frank Lloyd Wright designed and built home relocated to this park. You're going to absolutely love this one. Take a look at the design of this is absolutely gorgeous. So let's go ahead and hear the history on it. So, this was not original, built originally here. This was built in uh, Lyle, Illinois. And um, the Duncans, it's Duncan, called the Duncan House, um, they were, they had um, wanted a Frank Lloyd Wright home, but one of the, this is actually one of the stock or uh, prefabricated homes, which is not like prefabrication, like what we think of today. I mean, just like it was some of the materials that were readily available, uh, manufactured um, like Pella and Anderson windows and doors, as well as um, the timber was pre-cut okay. and then brought here. But everything else, I mean, although it's a stock home, um, the contractor, which was uh, Marshall Erdman, he gave people options and one of the options was carport or garage or nothing you know and the duncans chose the carport um the, and originally the duncans to save on costs chose the concrete block mm -hmm. but when tom took the house apart and put it back well he didn't take it apart he when he put it back together he knew that frank Lloyd wright would have wanted it in stone okay yeah so um he put it uh spoke with the Frank Lloyd Wright Building Conservancy and they approved the stone yep. and this is local stone stone quarry it's not quarried off this property but it's Mar Maryland leadstone and if you look um, you can see that it all the the batten matches right up with um, the ledges on the, the stone wall as well as the rooftop oh yeah yeah, yeah. the terracing of the rooftop mm -hmm. you know it's the cantilever once again. Yeah, yeah. again. Appliances. Oh, really? With the, the pink refrigerator with the pedal on the bottom. Wow. Very old style. Yeah. Look so, at that. All it. original, huh? Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Very, Lots very cool. Well. Oh, they had a great taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out of the box. And, and look at there, an island way back then. Oh, right. right, yes. And that was a very novel idea back then. And now it's like, you know, how do we live without our islands? <laughs> but for one time, they actually put more space for a kitchen. Yeah. Wow. Really? And look at your ovens way over uh, here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's not a, well, I guess it's a little bit of a work triangle. Wow. This is beautiful, huh? Oh, my God. Can you see the oven? Then I realized there's a box in there. Yeah. Yeah. And again, so notice how the, the outside the same materials, the same designs, carried out on through the inside. So this one was Frank Lloyd Wright, right? right? Yep. It was not yes. with somebody else. Yes, no, this was Frank Lloyd Wright's house. Yep, yep. it's one of the, his attempts at making uh, his homes affordable. Whereas the Balter house, that was built specifically for the Balters because they, they had the Absolutely creative designs like always. And this kitchen seemed a little bigger than the typical Frank Lloyd uh, kitchen. You can see the hallway there with the compression as he's known for where you walk into the opened areas. But no question, this was just absolutely gorgeous. Love the design and they've done a great job. All right, All right. So, so what year was this one by Frank Lloyd Wright? Um, the Duncan House was built in 1957 in Lyle, Illinois. Wow, super cool. It reopened in Polymath Park 2007. What do you think of that living room, Alice? Pretty fantastic. I love like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that you've seen some of the inside, let's take a look at the outside. And I just love looking at how Frank Lloyd Wright really tried to, you know, with this organic architecture blended in with the landscape, the hills and all of you know the brickwork in the woods, uh, just absolutely amazing. Let's sit back and check this out until we get to the next house, which you're gonna really love. We 
love this Frank Lloyd house, but we still got one more to go. That's right, you're gonna love this next one. But before that, definitely check out our falling water video, one of our most popular videos here on how to have fun outdoors. We'll put the link at the end of this video, but definitely check that out. Here is the entry. No, guess what? Listen to this. That was actually the back of the house, and I've taken you to the front of the house right now. Oh. So what you're looking at here is the original front of Mantilla. Now, why is, a, is the front of the house facing this way instead of going up the driveway? That's because of orientation, site orientation. Part of organic architecture is right designing according to nature to take advantage of things like natural airflow and solar exposure. So when he's drawing it up, he's orienting it a specific way with his, the majority of his glass, which you're not seeing right now, having a Southern-esque exposure. So when rebuilding a house, you have to face it the same exact way that Wright had intended or else the house isn't going to work. <laughs> so that's why we have the front here. And you notice that there's not even a front door in this area. That's a, another way of creating a sense of privacy because part of organic architecture is that privacy for the client. So we don't have a front door. This entrance or this, this surface of the house looks nothing like what we pulled up on. So for people maybe driving by on the street, they're not going to notice this. And in addition to this look in its original location, there were pine trees everywhere. This is the Lindholm house after the Lindholm family. And the name of the estate it was on was called Mantilla, which is a Finnish word for among the pines. So this is more of what you're accustomed to seeing mm -hmm. with Frank Lloyd Wright, with his commissioned works. So he designed this according to Cloquet, Minnesota, the, where this was located, that pine forest. And now all of these swooping roof angles make a lot more sense because they fit into that. So this was a pretty nice kept secret from the public. They didn't have a lot of looky-loos coming over to see this. So this was constructed in 1955 and the family moved in in the first week of 1956 here. Wow. And they used it throughout the generations all the way up until 2015. And that's when inside the radiant floor heat, the pipes burst. So that was a cost that they could not afford to repair. They, they couldn't take it on. It was uninhabitable and nobody wanted to purchase it they didn't want to deal with that sort of headache so the structure had to go because it did lose its natural landscape it eventually the, the surrounding area it became a commercial district oh. so the family contacted the frank lloyd wright building conservancy who oversees this sort of things and the conservancy very familiar with tom and heather because of the duncan house so they suggested the family contact Tom and Heather to see if they wanted to assume responsibility. And they did. So uh, Tom went out to Minnesota with just a handful of guys and they deconstructed it and brought it here and it was put up in 2019. So this is our newest one on site awesome. so far here. But when we um, go into the house and even outside, there are two things that are not original. The two main things are the concrete block exterior and the concrete floor. This is a poured concrete foundation. There is no basement underneath it. But the rest of what you're seeing out here, such as the terracotta tiles, thousands of them, those are all original. All of those saved okay. when they deconstructed it. And the same with what we'll see inside. So the majority awesome. of the furniture, original Frank Lloyd Wright furniture that, that he designed around this time too. So I'm going to have us go into this main entrance now, which is on the side of the building. So, you know, anybody coming to visit the Lynn Homes, they would almost have to look for it. You know, go through. Just watch your head because I would find to go everywhere. I'm picking up that this way. We would skate all the time. Yeah, I love this. I, I really love it. Uh, Yeah, this is amazing, isn't it? Lingua 
water would actually, it wasn't a Usonian house, but it was very, it was reminiscent of one. That was his beginning phases of doing something like that. So these are built in bank heads here. Very cool. The lines with a right structure is when he was little, he studied nature, realized intrinsically that nature is just shape upon shape. Even if you look at a rounded leaf to him, you know, that was a circle with a triangle on top. So geometry to him, really important, obviously, in all architecture, but he really tried to focus on that. And so he's going to always have some sort of line in his structure. And usually for Frank Lloyd Wright, it's going to be a horizontal line. And that is because the line has to reflect the landscape. His structures that we're seeing today, when we were in Duncan, when we're here, they were just sprawling structures. You know, they, they were flat, they were elongated. So the horizontal line creates an expansive atmosphere. It makes things seem larger than what they really are. So it does okay. enhance that. But when you were pointing out the windows over here and talking about the tree, you know, we were talking about the trees here. He also uses the vertical line here. So you see how he just, um, he hammers home that idea of horizontality and then that brings out the vertical line a lot more. Yeah, That's a great point. Mm -hmm. like great, way. great point. <laughs> I, I know a little bit about his architecture. I don't need to straight okay. meet in there. So I just want to explain to you a little bit more. When I took you to the front of the house and I was talking about orientation and yeah. why Wright wants the glass in a certain area, because this is very similar to Falling Water when you were there, because he oriented that structure with, with the, the same concept. So here in this room, you can see that this is where all of the glass is. So this is his concentration on the sun. Sun rising over there, setting over here. If you were on here on a sunny day at this time of year, the sun would be coming into the home to heat it. But as the sun is higher up in the sky in the summer, those cantilevered eaves, they act as our visors so they block out the sun. Yep. Wow. So you're not getting the penetrating rays, you're just getting the indirect lighting. So that is why that orientation is so important. Not only getting the light and the air in, but it keeps the house cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. With true organic architecture, he's not using any sort of air conditioning at all. So it can get very humid in those houses. Leachy and I love this house. It seems like the more Frank Lloyd Wright houses that you tour, the more addicted you get to his architecture. We're building a deck in our backyard and we definitely have used some of the tricks that we've learned. We'll be showing those videos on our How to Have Fun Outdoors channel in the near future. And boy oh boy did we try to do some cool things. But take a look at the design of this. People talk about falling water and they talk about the east and the west and all the different cool things he's done. But guess what? This building, this home was super cool. So definitely, if you get a chance, no question about it, you're going to want to come to this park. They are really, really uh, great people. They've done a great job, and we were impressed. We give these guys a full five stars. They have really taken care of the place. And thank you so much for watching How to Have Fun Outdoors. Again, don't forget, check out our Frank Lloyd Wright falling water video one of our most popular videos uh, we'll leave the link right here for you and thanks so much for watching how to have fun outdoors yeah.